Welcome to the video demonstration on newborn screening specimen collection. This demonstration will outline the recommended procedure for the proper collection of a blood spot specimen for newborn screening. Georgia's newborn screening program screens for 29 different disorders found in blood. Most babies appear healthy and show no signs of being sick right after birth, so disorders can be missed. Blood disorders on Georgia's newborn screening panel are treatable, which is why early identification and treatment are important. In order for the newborn screening program to be successful, properly collected blood specimens and rapid transit of specimens to the state laboratory are necessary. The purpose of this video is to increase knowledge of staff who collect blood specimens on newborns. This video will be posted on the newborn screening website as well as distributed to any hospital that requires assistance with their collection technique. The demonstration of the collection procedure is in accordance with the Clinical Laboratory Standards Institute, or CLSI, Guidelines for Specimen Collection, titled Blood Collection on Filter Paper for Newborn Screening Programs. Blood collection for screening occurs after 24 hours and before 48 hours of life for infants in Georgia's well baby nurseries. Enteral feedings of colostrum or formula must also occur during that time before collecting a specimen. Blood collection for babies admitted to a NICU or a level two nursery occur on the following schedule. The first screen upon admission, the second screen at 48 to 72 hours of life, and the third screen at 28 days or at discharge, whichever comes first for infants 2,000 grams or less. Before beginning the collection procedure, gather all necessary supplies, including newborn screening card, DPH form 3491, gloves, alcohol wipes with only alcohol, a heel warmer, a disposable commercial type only, a retractable lancet, one millimeter incision depth, 2.5 millimeter length, sterile gauze, a Band-Aid, a sucrose nipple, which is optional, and blankets for swaddling the infant. Wash hands thoroughly and apply gloves. Gloves should be used during the entire collection procedure. If collecting blood from more than one baby, change gloves and wash hands between babies. Identify the infant for specimen collection using hospital identifiers. Place infant on radiant warmer or in bassinet. Apply heel warmer. Swaddle infant and only expose the foot to be used for specimen collection. Complete all information requested on the specimen collection card and assure all information is accurate and legible. To avoid contamination with foreign substances, refrain from touching the filter paper. Position the infant with feet lower than heart level to increase blood flow. Remove heel warmer. Offer a sucrose nipple if applicable in your institution. Select the site for lancing using only the lateral aspects of the heel to avoid causing damage to the bone. Refer to the diagram for proper site selection. Clean heel with alcohol wipe. Allow site to air dry. Lance the site. Wipe away first drop of blood with sterile gauze to avoid specimen contamination with body fluids. With gentle pumping action, allow a large drop of blood to form. Avoid milking or squeezing the foot, which can cause hemolysis and contamination of the specimen. Apply one drop of blood to each circle. The drop must be large enough to saturate through to the other side of the filter paper. Blood can be applied to either the front or the back side of the card, but not both sides of the card. This is what a properly completed newborn screening specimen card should look like. The following procedure is for staff who apply blood onto the circles using the back of the newborn screening card. Follow steps one through 12 of the collection procedure. Allow blood to pool at lanced site on the heel. Gently touch blood to filter paper. Once the blood has visibly saturated through the circle, proceed to the next circle until all circles are filled. Allow specimen card to dry at room temperature, about 18 to 25 degrees Celsius, lying flat or on a drying rack for a minimum of three hours. 
do not stack specimens, and do not use additional heat or sunlight to dry specimens. Check the card to assure all information is entered. Send card to the state laboratory within 24 hours of collection. Included in this demonstration video are examples of common specimen collection problems. Uneven saturation is the most common of all collection problems. Unevenly saturated specimens are caused by insufficient blood placed on the circles, causing blood not to saturate through to the back of the filter paper. This occurs often when blood is applied to the front of the card. It is important to look at the back side of the card to determine if blood has saturated through. Blood may appear to be applied properly to the front of the card. However, once the card is viewed from the back, a waffle or asymmetrical appearance is visible. A larger drop of blood is needed. Contaminated specimens occur when substances come into contact with filter paper, through gloved or ungloved hands or substances before or after the specimen is collected. The blood looks watery and runs outside the circle. Common causes of contaminated specimens are serum or alcohol rings, the use of heparin to collect blood, not allowing alcohol to dry, squeezing or milking heel to obtain blood, water, food, lotion, powder, or formula present on the filter paper. Layering of specimens occurs when applying more than one drop of blood to the same circle on the filter paper. Layering can also be caused by applying blood to both sides of the filter paper. Oversaturation of collected specimens occurs when applying too much blood to the filter paper. This usually occurs when any mechanism other than a direct heel-to-card method is used to apply blood to the circle. Another cause of oversaturation is when blood is applied to both sides of the filter paper. In conclusion, when collecting blood for newborn screening, remember, blood must be evenly applied, cards must be completely dried for a minimum of three hours, and no foreign substances should come into contact with the filter paper. This presentation has been brought to you by the Georgia Department of Public Health Newborn Screening Program. For more information, please visit our website at dph.ga.gov nbs.